Hey, fatty! Okay, so tonight we got some exciting stuff to talk about. So, my very first topic tonight is the Snake Diet October Fast Challenge. So a girl came up with an idea, it was pretty clever. So we're doing like a fast for October and basically we turn it into an idea where it's going to be kind of a contest where whoever loses the most weight, basically you don't even have to win. You basically have to put up before and after pictures, show how much weight you lost and show your fasting time, how long you fasted for, things like this. As long as you get those pictures up, you're going to be entered in a draw to win a snake diet t-shirt. So the whole goal is to have this massive fucking group, you know, accountability where everybody's like pushing each other and getting crazy fucking fat loss results. Okay, so this October fast, people are going to be posting and basically, you know, just motivating each other. So here's the cool part that I added. Can you beat Paul? So Paul's going to be in this thing. So basically, my goal, I'd like to see some people be able to beat him. Because Paul can't even exercise. So there's going to be some pretty fat people in this. That if you get your ass in the gym at all, you should be able to get some pretty crazy weight loss results. Because Paul's pretty much sitting on his ass all fucking day because he can't hardly even walk. Well, he can walk, but he has a tough time. Okay? So... Now this brings this story up. So we got this October Fast Challenge. Some people I noticed are already using this hashtag October Fast, which is cool. So throw that up. Lana made a post. She's one of the Snake Diet coaches. Also, just to bring up the Snake Diet coaches, anybody that's using the hashtag Snake Diet Coach, feel free to message them and ask questions if you have issues with the fasting. Um, they're the same rules apply as me. If you want their fucking help, you got to fucking commit by adding friends to that group and they'll go through the rules and then they'll answer your questions. Um, so basically what happened here, so me and Paul, he's lost a fucking ton of weight. Um, I think we lost about 24 pounds in two weeks. So he didn't eat for 15 days straight. But one thing I will tell people because I want to be honest about this. So we were drinking tap water and the reason we were drinking tap water is because we're fucking poor and i know tap water is not expensive but we're genuinely poor okay like so he doesn't have any money and he's got to feed he's got two little girls he's got to buy groceries for and not just that like for him to leave his house and go get the water it's kind of a pain in the fucking ass hauling all this water so we bit the bullet and we started fasting on tap water which i know is not nearly as fucking good so we're fasting on tap water. He went 15 days, lost a pile of weight. And then he was, we did a two day dry fast and he started having some fucking gut issues. And then basically he was having troubles like taking in any fluid. So I had to make the executive decision to break his fast and we broke it tonight. And what we did is we knocked back a little bit of coconut water because he got low on electrolytes, right? And the thing is, normally we wouldn't have did this, but... He's big, he's big and I didn't need him out hoofing around being low on electrolytes and have him fall or something like this. So what happened was because of this, Paul, has now ha Paul now has a corporate sponsor who is somebody that I know that will remain anonymous that is actually going to pay for all of his snake diet supplies for the next two months as long as he doesn't fuck up and he's not going to fuck up because I'm coaching him. So you don't, Paul basically, he's so disciplined right now that he bas he eats when I tell him to fucking eat. He doesn't eat when I don't tell him to eat. Okay, like he's fucking trained. Like when, when Paul he goes to the kitchen, he's like, I don't eat. He's like, has it in his head that he just doesn't eat anymore. All right? So he's got a sponsor now and essentially... They're going to pay for his Evian water. So we're going to be drinking Evian. So this is the thing. This is why he was feeling kind of shitty for sure. So we broke the fast. And we're, going to just, we're not eating hardly any real food. Just some cucumbers and getting in some uh, uh, coconut water. But he's going to start this October fast. And we're going to be drinking Evian with the snake juice now. So and I know from experience it's fucking crazy. That fucking tap water is shit. 
I know it's shit, but we had no choice. So that's what's happening with that. So everybody that's involved in this October fast, get your fucking pictures up. Don't be a fucking pussy. Post your pictures. Hold you accountable. Get involved. Talk to other people. Make friends. Push each other. You'll be thrown in the draw for that t-shirt. It'll be exciting. And I want to really see how much fucking weight people... Who Someone asked who Paul was. Paul is the fellow I'm coaching. So Paul was 520 pounds when he basically started fasting. And now he's down to 455 pounds today. And in the last two weeks, we did an absolute fast on snake juice. And he lost 24 pounds. And so I just want to bring that up again. Like Paul's down 24 pounds. People need to understand that he isn't doing anything. Like nothing. He's got in the water at the swim pool a couple times and swam a couple laps. But I'm talking he hasn't done shit. Okay. If you can lose 24 pounds sitting on your ass. Like can you imagine how much fucking. How many sick people could actually do this. Like you don't got to make six fucking stupid meals a day. You don't got to do anything. I've talked about this before. You sit on your fucking ass. And you fucking fast the fat off. It's so fucking easy. Anybody can do it. Sheer willpower. That's all this shit is. Is sheer fucking willpower. Once you understand how to fucking get the snake juice in properly. Tonight I'm going to be talking about that too. I'm going to get into some specifics tonight with diet and shit at the very end of this. Okay. <clears throat> so. That was our first topic. So with Paul. Like I said we got a sponsor. We got water now which is exciting. And we're going to fucking kick some ass and he's already lost a pile of weight our goal is we want to be down 300 pounds by down to 300 pounds by christmas so he's got 155 pounds to kick in about three months and that's about 50 pounds a month which is pretty much what we predicted when he's basically not eating anything ever okay so about 50 pounds a month and plus once he actually gets a little more mobile where his hip where he's got less weight on his body and his hips feeling better we're gonna have him fucking pump an iron i'm gonna have him fucking in the gym lifting weights okay so, now, hopefully I don't get mad. <laughs> this next topic. Number two. We have clinically cured fucking type 2 diabetes. So for all you naysaying assholes out there, you can shut your fucking traps. You ever notice anybody that says you can't cure diabetes is a fucking idiot. They have no type 2. Type 1 is different. I'm going to get into this shit because I've been dealing with a lot of fat people with di diabetes. I've probably self-educated my, myself, fucking Austin Powers. I've probably, I've educated myself so much on fucking diabetes. Like, it's like you start to know almost everything about it just because you're helping all these diabetics because everybody's fucking diabetic. Okay? So, we have clinically cured type 2 diabetes. If you want to see the YouTube video with the full testimonial of Sonia... Go on my fucking YouTube channel. Subscribe to my fucking YouTube channel, okay? The video is called How to Cure Type 2 Diabetes. I give a step-by-step, -step, which I'll go through here, on how to fucking beat it. So essentially, Sonia, we were fasting. Type 2 diabetes is a fucking liver issue where your liver is fatty as fuck because you destroyed it by chowing down sugar and not fasting and got fat and you're a fucking liquor pig, that's how you get type 2 diabetes, okay? You don't just, it's not like, it's nothing. It's nothing. It's like a cold. It's like, it's like something that you can easily just get rid of. It's not there forever at all. It just comes with bad health. With good health, it goes away. It comes back with bad health. With good health, it goes away. You never just get it. And then people are like, oh, you'll get it back. You'll never get it back once you fix your fucking liver. It's not like that. Like people are so fucking brainwashed by big pharma that they think their little type 2 diabetes is like this thing. This And they, they, they fuck, I hate it when people like use it as a fucking some sort of a, a scapegoat. It's like, I'm a type 2 diabetic. I'm a type 2 diabetic. It ain't shit. Your fucking type 2 di diabetes is a fucking joke. So here, let me talk about diabetes. So type 2. What happens? Your liver gets fucked up. Your liver gets insulin resistant. Okay? So your liver can store approximately 100 grams of glucose, of glycogen, sorry. To get the glucose into the cells of the liver, you need insulin. Okay? When the liver is insulin resistant, that's kind of fucking idiot proof method of saying it. You can't take in insulin. 
So guess what? Instead of fixing the fucking insulin resistant liver, the fucking idiot doctors start giving you medication that tries to make the liver take in fucking insulin, which in turn takes in gly glucose to make glycogen. But then this doesn't help the cause. Because the main issue is your blood sugar is obviously sky high. Because if your liver can't take in all the sugar you're fucking chowing down, it's going to stay in your blood and your blood sugar is going to be sky high. And when your blood sugar is sky high, your pancreas, which produces the insulin, is going to work 20 times fucking harder. And that's when people end up being fucking type 1s that were type 2s because their pancreas gets burnt out. Okay? It's so easy. It's so fucking easy. If you go out read about diabetes, go read about liver, learn about the fucking liver, learn about the fucking pancreas, and learn about fucking blood sugar. It's so simple. It's not a complex thing. Okay? She's got paperwork to prove it's reversed. It's fucking... She has no diabetes. Because you won't have diabetes when your liver's working right. Now, to know for sure that you're cured of type 2 diabetes, here's what you do. If you can take a sugar load... So let's say I eat a bunch of fucking chocolate, okay? My sh blood sugar is going to naturally spike up. So high blood sugar, it's like, okay, pancreas starts fucking hammering out this insulin to bring the blood sugar down. But the blood sugar doesn't just go down unless it has somewhere to go. So most of it will go into your fucking liver. But if your liver can't take it because your liver is insulin resistant then that's where the whole problem starts and the blood sugar never comes down. See, the blood sugar will never come down. And guess what this leads to? You getting your fucking feet chopped off. You getting your hands chopped off. You fucking losing your fucking eyesight because your arteries, you're always, your blood sugar's so high that your arteries will get hardened and they'll fucking basically, you'll start destroying your fucking arteries, especially the little, the little tiny blood vessels like in your eyeballs. That's why fucking type 2 diabetics, they get like, they go blind. Okay? Or the little small little vessels in your feet and hands. Because that's where the worst circulation is. They'll fucking chop off your fucking feet. So, here's the thing. Would you rather fucking start fasting and beat your type 2 diabetes in like two fucking months? Or do you want to get your fucking foot chopped off? You know, do you want to fucking get your fucking foot chopped off? Like, how fucking... Like, it's a no-brainer. Like, get your fucking ass fasting. You see, Big Pharma, they make so much money on diabetes, you have no clue. You have no clue. It's beyond your imagination. Like, I'm talking money that you can't even imagine. Like, when you got... When you got, like... And let's talk real numbers here. Let's not talk your bullshit studies. Let's talk what you see with your own eyes. If you go to the United States right now... And you fucking what I consider obese, you're talking like fucking 95% of the population is actually obese. You're talking 95%. Like, you're talking everybody's fat. Like, there's never anybody that's the best version of themselves. Not if they're over fucking 25, 30 years old. Anybody over 30 is fat. Very rare is somebody over 30 not a fat ass. So, you get these people, you have, this, you have so much type 2 diabetes, so much pre-diabetes, everybody's hitting these meds. And the shit's not cheap. And it's just a massive glut on our whole healthcare system. It just breaks you. It completely fucking destroys the system. See, this is the, the most money out of anything. Like, this is the biggest business in the world. Like, big. this is the biggest business in the fucking world. In the world. So, like, look at what it does to the rest of everything. It just sucks other people, everybody else dry. Because people got to pay for this shit. And if you got your little healthcare plans and all this, it's all fucking paid for with insurance. Like, that money comes from other people's tax dollars. That money comes from places. Okay? Like, this is the problem. So when you, when somebody cures, it's cured. It's cured. It's gone. There's no symptoms. It's completely gone. Okay? When this happens, this is a big fucking deal. These people don't like guys like me. They don't like guys like me. They especially don't like guys like me that actually fucking... The other people cure this shit. Other people that fast and help people fast and things, they cure fucking type 2 diabetes on the daily. But people that actually start speaking out about it, that's the people they really hate because then it starts this massive fucking movement and then people are actually beating their diabetes, quitting all their meds. You know how much these medications cost? You know how much it costs when a type 2 diabetes gets insulin dependent? Like, your doctor's an idiot. If your doctor has you on insulin and you, you are a type 2, your doctor's a fucking moron. Like an idiot. 
if I had anybody on here watching right now, if you go to the doctor next time and you should question your doctor and ask them about fasting, and if you ask them, can fasting cure type 2 diabetes? If you ask them, will fasting fix a fucking fatty liver, an insulin resistant liver? If they don't understand it or they say no, they're a fucking idiot. They know nothing about anything. They're morons. Go find a different doctor. You're not going to find hardly any doctors anyway that'll speak up. Sometimes they're like, you know, they're like, oh, off the record. Fasting will cure fucking everything. Some smart doctors, but they won't say it publicly because it costs them their fucking job. Right? So we beat this. Do people get it? Type 2 diabetes is nothing. It's a fucking farce. It's a fucking scam. It's a fucking goddamn near. It's like a hoax. It's like a hoax. And if the worst part is, people, once they think they got it, it's like they think they got it for good. And then they just give up. They're like, they just, it's like they just, quit and they're like okay you got me you got me big pharma you got me where's my meds you might as well give me my meds i'm fucked for life i got type 2 diabetes it's like i'm fucked you're not fucked just fuck stop fucking eating garbage and fix the goddamn problem it's so fucking simple it's so fucking simple like i can't fucking stress this enough like anybody that thinks this shit's not curable is a fucking moron Fuck, I can't stand these people. Anybody that chimes in and ever says this, I had some fucking moron fucking PMing me the other day because I booted him out of the group because, of course, he had to chime in and say, type 2 diabetes isn't curable, blah, blah, blah. So I just booted him out of the fucking big group. And then he starts fucking just fucking messaging me. You know, he's fucking calling me names and shit. Fucking saying I sound like a drunk. <laughs> but, like, these people are so brainwashed. They just have no fucking clue. And this is the big, big part of the population. Like, we got a fucking pretty good-sized following here now, but it's still, like, just a, it's just, like, the surface. It's just the surface. Like, the main, major part of the population, like, I'm talking people you guys respect. I'm talking people that are nutritionists and, and general practitioners. I'm talking this is the issue. Like, how broken is our education system when these stupid fucking assholes think that type 2 diabetes can't be beat? Then you got some fucking hillbilly from a small town in Alberta, Canada that fucking is like reversing type 2 diabetes like by the fucking week. And there's, you know how many people? Sonia's just the one that did a full fucking testimonial with paperwork. Like we got paperwork to prove it. There's a million people that are beating it that I'm helping. They're just not going and getting the paperwork done. Fuck, I get people off the actual meds in like two fucking days. It takes more time to heal the liver to really cure the problem. But like I said, if you can handle that sugar load and your body will recover. So when your body can recover from a sugar load, so your blood sugar goes up and then it falls back down in like an hour or two, you're good. You don't have diabetes anymore. Okay, you don't have diabetes. That means that your liver is soaking up the fucking sugar. Okay, it's that easy. So you don't got diabetes if your fucking blood sugar recovers without meds. How fucking, fucking hard is that to fucking understand, for Christ's sakes? You don't have diabetes when your fucking blood sugar can recover on its own in an hour or two after pounding back a bucket of ice cream, and you don't need meds to do it. It's done. Done. Diabetes is done. Get this fucking video out there. Diabetes is fucking done. Type 2 diabetes, shut the fuck up. I don't even care if you got it at this point. It's like I can just beat it so easy. It's like, it's like... I fucking care about as much about your type 2 diabetes as I care if somebody has a fucking cold. It's a fucking joke. It's like, I'm more, like, I get more worried about people that actually have diarrhea. I am actually more worried about somebody that gets some nasty diarrhea from fucking, you know, maybe withdrawal or maybe having like detox effects, shit like this. I'm more worried about those people than I am about a fucking type 2 diabetic. Like, a type 2 diabetic's like just not, it's just a person that, it has a cold. It's like just a person has a fucking cold. It's absolutely nothing. It's a fucking joke. And as long as their liver, as long as their pancreas still produces insulin and their beta cells aren't all fried, it's reversible every time. And then you get people fasting, and then the pancreas starts to heal itself, and then they're making more insulin. Like how fucking hard is this to fucking understand? It's fucking simple. Simple. I figured it out. How did I figure it out? 
You know how I figured this out? Because I knew as soon as I started fasting, when I could keep my blood sugar down like fucking around 4 or even lower, like 3.8 for like days on end, I'm like, this is how you fucking cure type 2 diabetes. Because when you can keep your blood sugar down for fucking weeks on end and not eat any food, how fucking awesome is that for diabetes? It just gives your body a fucking complete chance to heal. Like, how awesome is that? That's how I figured this out. And the more I fucking self-experimented, and the more I read about the healing, about how shit can heal when you fast, I knew I, I knew you could cure it. I knew you could cure diabetes fucking eight months ago, for fuck's sakes. My very first video, I, I called it curing type 2 diabetes, because I didn't have the balls at that time to just say, fucking, it's cured. But now I have the balls because I know that it's just fucking gone. Fucking type 2 diabetes is a fucking joke. So any of your fucking friends that are bitching and complaining, oh, I can't fast because I got type 2 diabetes, I'm hypoglycemic or ho fucking hyperglycemic, like, shut your fucking trap. Shut your trap. Shut your fucking trap. Start fucking fasting. If your blood sugar doesn't get lowered in like 3.3, .3, so like 60 milli milli uh, uh, fuck, milligrams per deciliter, fucking you're good. Okay? A lot of you fucking people that are fucking addicts, your blood sugar is not even low. It's just because you're such an addict that you're having withdrawal, so you think it's low. Like, you think you're hypoglycemic, but you're fine. Like, until it drops below three, like, three fucking millimoles per liter, you're fucking good. Okay? Like, I ran my blood sugar at 3.6 for a month straight when I was eating that bacon and cucumbers every night, dry fasting all day, and training. I was fucking training my balls off with a blood sugar of under four. I was training my fucking balls off with a blood sugar of under fucking four. So like in milligrams per deciliter, that'd probably probably be like around around 80. Okay? Training my balls off with a blood sugar under four millimoles per liter. So when your blood sugar's in the fours, you're fine. Your doctor's an idiot if he says, if you, like, people actually worry about this. I've had so many questions, like, my, I just checked my blood sugar and it's fucking in the fours. Why is it so low? I'm like, it isn't low, you idiot. It's fucking high, for fuck's sakes. When you're fasting hardcore and you're healthy, it'll drop below four. Fuck. And then, you know why? Because they're so fucking brainwashed that they think a blood sugar of, like, over five is actually good. A blood sugar over five is trash. If you're fasted, it's trash. The only time you should ever be up over five is if you just ate some fucking goddamn carbs. Fuck. Like, because people are so, their blood sugar is so high now. Like, if you took a blood sugar average, if you went to the United States, I always use the United States because they're like the fattest people in the world pretty much now. Canada's probably second fattest. Fuck. But if you took an average, if you took everybody's fucking blood sugar just on the fly without being fasted, like, say you, that you let him fast for two hours or three hours. Like, fucking 90% of the population is going to have a blood sugar over five. That just goes to show you that the fucking goddamn population is unhealthy as fuck. A healthy population should have a fasted blood sugar of under five. Like, I'm talking two, three hours fast and not even a real fast. You get it? Like, if they should do a fucking goddamn study on that. They should go fucking take random blood sugars and, they'll, and you'll prove it. You'll see it. If your blood sugar is over five when you're fasting, you're fucking not even close to the best version of yourself. You got some serious fucking fasting to do to fix other issues. Okay? Diabetes can be cured. Type 2 diabetes can be cured 100% of the fucking time. As long as your fucking pancreas is not completely fucked. And if it is completely fucked, you're considered a type 1 at that point anyway. So if you're considered a type 2 because you're still making insulin, your fucking bullshit crybaby ass fucking diabetes type 2 can be reversed 100% of the fucking time. Put that in your fucking pipe and fucking smoke it, big pharma. Send this fucking video out. Fuck. Fuck that pisses me off. Type 2 diabetes is a fucking joke. Okay. I need a sip of this fucking <laughs> Pellegrino water I guess I got. My voice is already cracking like I'm a 13-year-old going through puberty tonight. Okay. Number three. Fuck, I get a lot of fucking questions like just... Stop worrying and start fucking fasting. There's so many people that just fucking ask a list of questions. 
I made a post the other day because I was getting so fucking sick of this. Fasting cures everything. Unless, unless you have had organs torn out. Because all of a sudden now you're not in a natural state. Or if you came out of your mom's womb with the fucking problem. If you were not born with the problem and you have all of your organs, your fucking health can be brought back to where it was. Your health can be brought back to the natural state of being with fasting. So people, I get like shit like this. Oh, I have fucking hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism. Shut the fuck up. Do you have your thyroid? Yes. Fucking start fucking fasting. Even if you're, and I want to top that off. Even if they have torn organs out, fasting is still going to be better than not. It's always better to fast. It's always better to fast. Okay? Fasting is always better than not doing it at all. I don't give a fuck what they've taken out of you. Everything though. It's like everything. Like I don't know all these names to these fucking goddamn health issues. Like some of the names that these dumb fucking doctors come up with. The name's a hundred miles long. Because see, that's one of the that's one of the ways they brainwash your ass. Because that's how they make themselves look smart. They make up big fancy fucking names. It's almost like the way like stars get spotted. You know, like when somebody finds a new star, like some astrologist, the star gets named after them. It's like every time they find a new fucking symptom. See, they're naming the symptom. There is no fucking disease ever. Everything can be beat. They're naming the symptom. See, even like, let's talk skin issues. Skin issues, it's always hormonal imbalances caused by bad fucking diet, no fasting. Every skin issue is the same fucking shit. It's like, but every tiny little skin issue, they have a different name. Like, I don't give a fuck. It's a fucking skin issue. Start fasting and fix it. Like, how fucking hard is that? Because I don't care if it's eczema, psoriasis, athlete's foot, acne. It doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter what the name is. Okay? Fast and beat it. Like, there's so many other things. Okay? Just start fucking fasting and shut the fuck up. Everything. It's like, it's like I got cancer. Start fasting. Fucking best thing you can do. And you know what they even do in the hospitals when people are really fucked up and they're pretty much going to for sure die of cancer? They fucking dry fast them for fuck's sakes. They never tell people this. God forbid the system tells people what they actually do in the hospital when fucking shit gets really fucking bad. God for fucking bed they tell you that they fucking dry fasted a guy until he fucking died. And you know why they dry fast him? To extend their life. To extend their life. So why don't you start try fasting before you're on your deathbed, you fucking idiots? Why won't the doctors get why won't the stupid doctors get him to do that? Like instead of waiting till the cancer patient loses all their body weight from all their fucking chemo meds, why don't they actually get him to fucking goddamn try fasting when they still have some fucking fat they can utilize for this shit? Like it's pretty hard when people come to me. Like I have so many people now, like I'll get people fucking telling me how their uncle or their auntie or something's got cancer. And first question I ask is, how much, how fat are they? And it's like, okay, they got some fat. Okay, good. We can do something with that. It's like, oh, they're skinny as fuck. Fuck. How do you fucking do anything with that? You can't. If they're already skinny, it's hard. Because you, you got to, they can still fast, but they're like, you're going to be, they're going to be chewing on muscle at that point. And like, whatever, that's not a bad thing if they're big. You know, if you're trying to heal something, you do whatever it fucking takes. You lose muscle, fucking so be it. But, like, if they got fat on them, then they can fast like a motherfucker. Okay? So, like, everybody, everybody, like, any health issue. Like I say, like, some of the people that talk to me, they know the names better than I do. I don't know what this shit's fucking called. There's crazy names out there for fucking uh, all health-related issues. They always have some stupid name, and then they have some stupid med. Like, I don't know the names of all these meds. Like the name goes, the na- the meds go on and on and on and on and on. Like I don't know what these names are. Like some girl messaged me just yesterday night, and she said, "I'm off my uh, oh fuck, it started with an M. They even use it for chemo. Anyway, she's off this shit, 
and she had, I forget what she was using it for, but like, I don't know what that med was. I had to go Google it to see what the fuck it was even for. You know, there's a million meds. So fucking what? Start fasting. Like I said, as long as you have all your organs and they're all functioning somewhat, like say if your kidneys are fucked up, but they're still functioning, fucking you're, there's no issues. You can cut everything. Start fucking fasting and cut fucking food on your fucking trap. That's all you gotta do. Like, oh man, there's a name. Yeah, it's right there. Methotextrate or whatever the fuck it is. Like, I don't know what that fucking shit is. Who cares? I don't care what it is because you don't need it. You just need to fucking fast as long as your fucking body's not fucked up. Fucked up organ-wise. Like, even stupid things like your tonsils. Like, that's such a minor little surgery. But really, why are you getting your tonsils out? You know why? Because it's that crybaby mentality. It's like, well, you're sick and your tonsils swelled up, so we better tear them out instead of maybe listening to the fucking body and trying to solve the fucking problem. It's like, let's just tear out anything that bothers you. Fuck, your arm hurts, let's just cut off your fucking arm. Oh, fuck, you got headaches. Let's just give you a fucking lobotomy for fuck's sakes. That'll solve that problem. Like, that's what they might as well be doing. Like, let's just rip everything out. You know, let's just rip it all out. Let's just rip everything out so you're just an empty cadaver. Let's just rip it all out. Fuck. You might as well... You see what I'm getting at? They don't solve any problems. They just rip shit out and then put you on meds. And that's what they want. What better scenario? What better scenario is there? Let's just rip out your fucking organs, and then we got you on meds for life. And t but as long as your organs aren't ripped out yet, then they can't do that. Because they know that you could actually fix yourself, the fucking cocksuckers. See? As long as you got your organs, you're good. But as soon as they fucking rip your fucking organs out, then you have to be on meds. Like somebody with no thyroid, now they probably have to take some sort of a medication, which fucking, they can still fast, but it doesn't help the cause. You understand? Like, there's all sorts of shit. Okay. So, so what was happening is I was getting, like, questions on that group. There's always some question. Will this do this? Will this, can I do it if I'm fat? Or if I'm, if I have some disorder? Can I do this if I'm fucking sick? You know, can, like, just do it. Just fucking start. You don't have to look at the fucking top of the mountain either. Just fucking start. Go to the store. Okay? Go to the store. Buy some good water or get some good fucking water. You need about two liters a day max. Buy the two salts, potassium chloride and fucking sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is fucking like pink salt. Potassium chloride is going to be all sorts of different brands. No salt, salt free, new salt. Now is a brand you can buy it over the internet. Buy those two salts and water and fucking start. You don't need anything else if you dumb it right down to that to start off with. Buy those two fucking salts, go get yourself some fucking water and start fucking fasting and start healing today. Like tonight, like just start. <clears throat> you don't even need to fucking get the fucking salt still tomorrow morning. You're not gonna die in 12 hours without the salts. Just fucking start. How hard is it to start, okay? It's like going to the gym. It's just get in the fucking gym. You don't need everything planned out. Okay, if you don't know what you're fucking doing, go to the gym and jump on the fucking machines then. Okay, they got these machines that are just like idiot proof to use. You sit in the machine and you work the muscle. Go to the fucking gym and start fucking goddamn training. Don't overthink shit. Just fucking start. Okay, but make sure you get the fucking salts in and the water in. As soon as you can, or you'll get fucked up. As people have learned the hard way. Because little crybabies don't want to fucking drink their snake juice. And then two fucking days down the road, they hit a wall on electrolytes and feel like shit. Drink the fucking snake juice. Like, this is so simple, people. Fucking simple. Subscribe to my fucking YouTube channel. Watch the videos. Watch the Do Not Complicate Snake Juice video. I make it so idiot-proof. There's a huge range. There's a huge range. I'm going to get into that here right away, though. So, this topic, I'm going to spend some time on this one tonight. Number four. Snake juice 
versus food intake. Fuck is my voice cracking tonight. <clears throat> Snake juice versus food intake. Okay, we're going to get into a lot of shit here. So here's the way it works. For anybody that doesn't understand why you need fucking snake juice. So scrap the lemon juice, scrap the vinegar, scrap the baking soda, scrap the cayenne pepper. For now, just dumb it down to the two electrolytes. Okay, the two electrolytes. We're just going to talk about that. You need potassium and you need fucking sodium to fire your fucking muscles and make your fucking body run properly. Your body needs some other electrolytes as well, but it needs those specific two and quite a bit of volume. And then you need water. Okay, now, you always are going to need sodium and potassium any given day. And you're going to need a certain amount. So whether you're getting it from snake juice, juice, fuck. Whether you're getting it from snake juice or from food, you have to get it in. Okay? So here's the thing. You pretty much can't get it from food if you're a fat ass and we don't have you eating. So that means food is low, like nothing. Snake juice is up. So fat asses drink lots of snake juice and they don't eat. Now, let's talk the other extreme. The routine I'm doing right now. I am doing a routine where I don't drink nothing all day. I'm not drinking anything, but I still got to get in my sodium and potassium. So how the fuck am I doing it? Because I'm eating a pile of fucking fruit. And I'm getting all my potassium. And then I salt the fuck out of the fruit with salt. Like I put salt on my bananas. Salt on the oranges. Salt on the apples. I'll eat a steak. Salt, salt, salt. Like sodium chloride. And I'm getting all the potassium through fruit. So that's when you're not a fat ass. And see, I'm not trying to lose any weight. I'm holding right about 176, 177. Do you understand if you're fat, snake juice high, so sodium and potassium high, food zero, okay? Now once you're fucking lean, you can fuck around with it. Depending on your macros and shit, the routine I'm on is food high, snake juice zero. Or you could be on a routine where you're maybe eating a little less carbs, maybe you're trying to, maybe you're eating foods that wouldn't have as much potassium, okay? And you got to be able to eat a lot of volume to get all that potassium in in one sitting like I do as well. Maybe you can't eat as much as me. So maybe it'd be, so now you're still lean. So it might be snake juice medium in the day and food medium via how much potassium and sodium you're getting in the food. A good example of this is your mainstream keto bullshit. So let's say... For sure. Now, somebody that is eating keto macros, okay? I'm, when I, I hate using the word fucking keto because it's just... I'm talking always fasting here. Always fasting. Not mainstream fucking keto bullshit where they eat fucking just whatever they want. Fasting. So let's say I wasn't doing the fruit kick. Let's say for some reason I was eating low carb. We'll call it low, low carb. Well, it's hard for me to get as much potassium as I need because I can get a lot from that fruit. But let's say if I'm trying to really watch the carbs so I can only eat so much vegetables, then my potassium is going to be hard to get in when I'm trying to low carb it. Okay? So that means I'd have to add some snake juice or I'm going to feel like shit. Either fucking way, you got to get in a certain amount of fucking goddamn fluid volume in the day from water or whatever you're eating if you're not a fat ass, and a certain amount of fucking sodium and potassium. How fucking hard is that to understand? Okay, so you have to get it in. So whether you're getting it in from food or from fucking snake juice, you have to get it in. Fat people don't need to eat. So that gives us one option. Snake juice. Get it? Snake juice. Okay? Now if you're lean... You got fucking, you can play. You can play with it. So my routine right now, like I said, I'm dry fasting all day. And I could drink a little bit of snake juice if I wanted to. But I like fucking dry fasting. I feel good. So what I do is I dry fast all day. And then I simply eat basically fucking two and a half kilograms of fucking fruit and carrots every night. 
And then I eat my fucking meat source. That's what I do right now. And then on a rest day from the gym, let's say tomorrow I was not going to train, I will fast. And I will decide if I'm going to drink snake juice or go dry. Depending how I feel and depending what the scale's doing. If I want to fucking cut a little harder during that 48, I'll dry fast. If I want to fucking feel a little better during that 48, I'll drink snake juice. There's always a trade-off there. Because by the time the end of that 48 comes, I'm pretty taxed without eating again. Does that make sense? Okay? you got to get in the sodium and potassium in the day. If you're low, you're going to feel like shit. Fat people can't get it in through food. So either you're, that's why I said before, either you're fat or you're not. When I say that, so, so let's say, now here's a good routine for somebody that is trying to lose that last 10 pounds. What they would do is they would eat low carb, low carb, keep their fat burning, keep themselves in fat burning mode as long as possible with crazy fasting time. If you're fat, you should be doing 48s and 72s at least until you fucking lose all the fucking weight if you're 10 pounds over. Okay, I'm talking 10 pounds over. 48s and 72s is pretty aggressive for somebody that's 10 pounds overweight. If you're 20, 30, 40, 50 and so on pounds overweight, you fucking fast your fucking fat ass off as long as you fucking can and shut the fuck up. That's what you do. Okay, I'm talking people that are trying to cut that last 10 pounds where they got to actually start fucking around a little bit with macros. The best way to cut that last 10 fucking pounds is going to be going with a low carb routine with lots of fasting and maybe doing 48s and 72s and obviously train your fucking bag off when you can. And then once you get fucking really lean or as lean as you want to get, then you can start fucking around with fruit and some carbs again. Okay, that's it. It's simple. You don't touch shit for food until you're fucking ripped. And when you get close to being lean, then you can eat more food but still keep the carbs down. And then when you get really fucking ripped, then you can really fuck around with fucking fruit. Because here's the fucking honest, honest truth. Once you're ripped, fucking eating keto is fucking stupid. You know how I know this? Because I've done it. Everything. If I ate a meal a day for six days a week when I'm lean, one thing, I will drop a little bit of water, but who fucking cares? I feel weak on keto versus fucking eating fruit. So if I was eating a meal a day, six days a week, so let's say you lost all your fucking weight on snake juice, took fucking three, two months out of your life or whatever, however fat you are, got down to where you're lean, okay? So you're lean now. I'm not talking your fucking stupid fucking keto crybabies that are like, well, you can lose weight eating keto too, eating multiple meals a day. Like, we're talking real weight loss, motherfuckers. We're not talking about your stupid little 10 pounds. We're talking fucking 100 fucking pounds in fucking two, three months. Like, you think I'd have Paul eating fucking even one meal a day on fucking a keto routine? Fuck no. He's not going to lose any fucking weight doing that. You fucking don't eat when you're fat. So anyway, you get down... If I, when I've experimented hardcore with this, I ate one meal a day for about six days out of the week, and I always threw in a 48 hour fast. And when I was low carb in it, to where I was like basically, like, you know, in fat burning mode, low carb, like strict keto, the most strict keto you can possibly do is the fucking version of keto where you don't eat any food. Now that's strict. When you're not eating, that's as strict as your fucking bullshit keto diet can get. Because you're eating your fucking stupid fucking body fat. And I fucking... <clears throat> drives me nuts when people say strict keto like they're fucking special. Like, are you doing strict keto? Fucking shut your fucking trap. There's nothing more strict than not eating at all. That's fucking pure motherfucking fat burn, motherfuckers. Like, pure fat burn. So shut the fuck up with your stupid fucking keto eating routine. But now... When you're lean, like I said... When I was eating low carb, so trying to keep it under 50 grams a day, it's very hard to get in a good volume of vegetables. So then you have to drink some snake juice. But when I was eating that way, I was not as fucking explosive in the gym. Eating keto, eating strict keto combined with fasting. So we're always talking fasting. That's a given. Eating strict keto is fucking junk compared to fucking eating fruit. It's fucking junk. I don't give a fuck what anybody tries to tell me. I've done these. I compete in powerlifting. Strict keto. As you will not be as strong when you get fucking ripped. 
You will not be as strong. I guarantee it. You just, you can't get the energy from it. It just isn't there. Now, it's good for like mental clarity, but so is eating fruit. You're not going to have those issues. It's not like eating a bunch of starchy carbs or a bunch of fucking shitty sugar. You're not going to have mental clarity issues eating fucking apples, okay? Like it was natural to go grab an apple, to go grab a banana. You think a caveman walked by an apple? Do you think they walked by some berries? Fuck no, they ate them for fuck's sakes. So do you understand if you're fat, you don't. You can plug your ears for this. But if you're once you're lean, strict keto with the fasting routine is fucking junk compared to fucking eating carbs, eating fruit. I know this because I've done it. I can hydrate myself way better with fruit. You're so hydrated on fruit. Like a liter, like if I ate a kilogram of oranges, that's equal to one kilogram of water. Let's say for like, vo- like fluid volume. Those oranges hydrate the fuck out of me. That, that, that hydration is what gives me the energy. Okay, like here's a good example. I haven't fucking drank any fluid since last night. Oh yeah, sorry, I lied. Because this talk, so I had a couple sips. But I'm going to go to the gym, and it's almost 7. I'm going to go to the gym tonight, and I've fucking been dry fasting all fucking day. I dry, like, I'm sweating my bag off dry fasting because of that fucking fruit volume I eat. Okay? So that's my routine. This is the what you get to look forward to when you lose all the fucking weight. Okay? But until then, you don't eat. Until then, you just worry about getting in enough salt, enough sodium and potassium. So now, let's talk about fucking muscle loss and muscle building a little bit because it goes hand in hand with this. If you're a fat ass, you can train for days on snake juice and not fucking lose any muscle mass. The thing is, you got to understand, chances of you gaining muscle mass fasting on snake juice are probably pretty slim. I'd, it'd be a fucking good experiment. I'd like to get a fat, like, actually Dan thought that he was actually building muscle when he was fatter. He was training really hard and he felt he was getting stronger and he was doing a long fast and he was actually fucking thought, like, he felt he was getting stronger. But I'd have to put that to the test. The best way to know is log your fucking volumes in the goddamn gym. So here's how I know. Here's how I know. When you log your shit to a T, so let's say my squat. Let's say I squatted 225 pounds for six sets of 10 reps on one minute rest. So it's like I do 10 reps with 225, take one minute rest, get under the bar, do 10 minutes, one minute rest, 10 reps, one minute rest, 60 reps, 225. I log that, and then the next time I squat, I better at least be able to hit that, if not bump it up five pounds. I know from my fucking volumes that I'm fucking getting stronger. So if you're losing weight, and the volumes in the gym are going up, you're fucking putting on muscle. It's not rocket science. You don't need a DEXA scan to prove this shit. If your fucking volumes are going up, and you're fucking losing weight, you're fucking gaining muscle and strength. You're at least maintaining. At least. Now, if you're fucking on a crazy cut where you're drinking snake juice for three weeks straight. Now, now I'm talking to people that are exercising hard here. Somebody that's sitting on their ass and just drinking snake juice that's a fat ass, that person's not going to lose anything. They weren't doing anything before they started fasting. They're not doing anything now. Nothing's going to fucking change. I'm talking people that are beating their body up in the gym. Because it's a little different story. Because once you get down to a certain weight where you got a little bit of extra body fat, at that point, if you're training hard, you want to maybe cut a little slower to lose that last 10 pounds. I've done some pretty hardcore experiments, though. I went eight days, trained seven of the eight days. Mind you, it wasn't big volume. Small volume, lots of weight, low reps. My muscle mass, according to the DEXA scan, did not change. That was an eight-day fast where I lost 16 total pounds. I probably lost about nine pounds of straight body fat. And the scan did not change. I was 148 pounds lean mass going in, 148 pounds lean mass when I fucking went out of it. So that proved to be right there. Um, so you got to understand, log your fucking volumes because if you don't log your volumes, you don't know anything. You don't know anything. It's like logging your fucking body weight. Log your fucking body weight. Log your fucking volumes. Log everything. At the start, like 
people should be logging everything for the first couple weeks to really learn where they're at, especially if they're fat. Log your fucking water intake. Log your fucking piss. Fucking piss in bottles and log the volume coming out of you too. Shit on a goddamn plate and log that. Fucking log your fucking volumes in the gym. If you, lo- if you use like, example, let's say you use like a shoulder press machine. If you're just on the machines because you don't know what you're doing and you can't do free weights. Log the volume. If you're, and, log, and always do it on the same time frame. Take one minute to 90, sec- 90 seconds rest. Fucking do like six by ten. Okay, log it. So you did, so say you did a shoulder press, fucking 50 pounds, six sets of 10, okay? So that's 60 reps times 50 pounds, that's 300 pounds of total volume in about eight minutes if you do the rest intervals properly. Next time, do 55 pounds on fucking six by 10 again. Keep it the fucking same. Don't do a million different exercises in the fucking gym. Keep it the fucking same so you know what the fuck's going on. This is where people fuck up. They don't log their fucking volumes with anything. This is where there should be no guesswork. How do you think I know how to dial in my macros so good? Because I log. How do how do you think I know that a low carb fucking keto kick with a fucking fasting routine? Let's say I was eating one meal a day for six days a week with a forty eight eating keto. Keto meaning low carb versus the fucking fruit with the dry fast. How do you think I know the fruit's better? Because I'm way fucking stronger. I'm way stronger. Fuck. Like, I'm building, I'm fucking like just getting fucking so fucking strong, it's not even funny doing this. When I was, now, if I was trying to cut down to like 163 pounds, you, you want to be, when you're trying to cut, this is key. If you're already fairly lean and you're trying to cut that last bit, you want to stay in fat burning mode 24-7. So at that point, yeah, you might want to go low carb to where you're never kicking yourself out of ketosis. And the best way to do that, then why even eat keto? Just fucking fast for 72 and you'll cut three pounds right there. See, in the end of the day, if you're trying to cut, just don't eat at all. Don't eat at all and just don't pound your, like say if you're fairly lean, don't eat at all and just don't pound your ass in the gym so hard for three days. Sit on your fucking ass, take a good rest and let the fucking fat melt off. And that's it. And then you can go back to eating the fucking, the fucking, the, the carb kick. You see? Cut. You want to cut on low carb or straight fasting, maybe low carb with some eating when you're getting fairly lean. But if you're a fat ass, we want to cut on no food, obviously. I fucking, that's what I fucking preach. Cut on no food at all. And then when you get lean to the point where you're getting quite lean, then start cutting on fucking low carb. And then once you get to where you want to be, then start carving up again and start fucking with the macros. Dial them in. And log your fucking volumes in the gym. And then you know you're making fucking gains. This is how you make fucking gains. You need to know you're making the gains. Like, even my bench press. I was on, I'm doing a bit of a volume routine. I think I started, when I started this volume routine, I started nice and light. Something I could get through. Six sets of ten. About a one minute to a 90 second rest. So, basically at one minute, I get under the bar, set up, and start banging them off. I think I started at like 185 pounds, which for me was easy. So I banged up my six by 10. Next time I bench pressed, 190, which is more volume because 190 times 60 reps is more fucking net volume. Then the next time, 195. Then the next time, 200. And then once I started getting a little harder, once I get to like, once you, fuck, once you get up to like, I'm 177 fucking pounds. When I, when you get up to 225 pound bench for six sets of 10 on a minute rest, that's fucking like top level. You know, I'm at 115 right now. So 115 is getting pretty hard. So I did it. I make sure that I don't jump the weight up until I do it fairly well. So I, I've done it twice, 215, sorry, 215 pounds. So I did it like, I have three bench push pull days a week. So I've done that one twice. And the second time I did it, I got through it not bad, but the last set there was a couple grindy reps. Tonight, I'm hitting it. And I'm hitting 215 again tonight. And I'm pretty fresh. I just got off a 48 hour fast. I squatted yesterday, but that won't affect nothing. And if I get through this 215 fairly easy, guess what I'm hitting next time? 220 pounds. For six sets of 10 on one minute fucking rest. Everything's got to be constant. The reps and the sets and the rest. Then you know what the fuck is going on. See, I can, get, no, I can do a whole fucking two hour talk about fucking training. 
People don't know how to fucking train. You see people at the gym just winging it. You don't know where you're at. You have to log everything. <clears throat> Excuse me. You have to log everything. Especially the big compounds. So like you got to log your fucking deadlifts. Log your fucking squats. Log your flat bench. Log your fucking dips. Rows. Log everything. But fucking especially the big compounds. Because that will show true strength gains. Like my goal right now, even my deadlift, I'm doing some volume. I think I pulled like 255 for six sets of 10 on one minute rest the other day. And it's still fairly easy. So I'm going to bump it up to 265 next time, which is tomorrow. 265, to, like once a guy my size gets up to where I'm deadlifting like 300 pounds for six sets of 10 on a minute rest, that's fucking crazy volume I can put on my body. That's fucking volume. And in a tight time frame. Okay, like we're doing this in eight minutes. Like you're doing 60, 300 pounds for 60 reps in eight minutes. That's some big volume. That's how you log shit. Okay, log it all. Log everything. Don't be fucking lazy. Don't just wing it. Oh, I'm doing biceps and triceps today. Fuck, shut up. Fuck, you want to get fucking serious? Get fucking serious. It doesn't take long. Log your shit. Learn your body for a solid month and then you'll know exactly where you're at. Where you're at. Like even me now, I don't even need to fucking have my little notepad in the gym anymore because I know my weight on every lift that I do so well that I can go do my workout and hit like six, six exercises. So like probably 360 total reps or so and go out to my car after and remember it all in my head and write it down. Like I know my body that fucking good. I always know what my weight's at. Right now, I could almost get it to the decimal. If I jumped on the scale, I haven't trained yet. But after my workout, when I get home, I jump on that scale. I bet it'll be like 176.8 on my scale. Like I know everything perfectly. There should be no guesswork. There should be no guesswork. Like Do some fucking homework for fuck's sakes. It drives me nuts when people just ask and ask and ask. Like This is your health. Everything's on my fucking YouTube channel. Go do some fucking homework and listen to what I fucking say. Especially about the salts. Okay, if you're a fat ass, you don't need to eat. You don't need to eat. And for this October fast, fucking you better fucking, you better give Paul a good run for your money in this fucking fast. Paul isn't exercising. Okay, Paul isn't exercising. You are. You're gonna. You better be anyway. Don't be a fucking pussy. Get in the fucking gym. Fuck, there should be some people that fucking can blast off fucking 45, 50 pounds in 30 days. There should be some people on there. Especially some of the males. Because usually a male might lose an extra 10 pounds on top of a female in a month. Okay, get your fucking asses in gear. Everybody's running their mouth about this October fast challenge. So I want to see some fucking results. And just to hit that on the head, I made a post on that group earlier today about basically it was a joke. I said that I'm, I'm starting a 1,000 day dry fast with an exclamation mark. Fuck me. Some of the people that thread I think actually believed it. A thousand day dry fast? Like give your fucking head a shake. The reason I posted that was because I was mocking, mocking you because I don't fucking care what you're starting. I want to hear your fucking results. And yes, I understand that people need motivation. So if they were going to start a seven-day fast, they want the motivation. Well, if you want the motivation, say that you're getting through, say that you're done 48 hours and I need motivation. Okay, ask for the motivation that way. Don't go saying that you're going to, don't make these big claims. It's like, oh, I'm going to fucking fast for fucking my whole, the rest of my fucking natural life. Yeah, that's going to happen. You get it? Results, talk, bullshit, walks. I want to see your fucking results. I don't care what you say you're going to do. Fucking do it. Okay? So, that's the end. I want to see some posts, same as normal. Get your fat asses on that group. I want to see before and afters. I want to see the fattest people fucking face your fears of judgment. If anybody says anything about your picture, we fucking boot them out of the fucking group. We run that group tight. We don't fuck around like these other fucking bullshit groups on Facebook and shit. Check out my Instagram too. I noticed my Instagram is kind of blowing up and I already even post on it. Okay? Oh, one last thing. One last thing. I'm getting quite a few people that are messaging me, messaging me about giving me donations. And I don't use fucking, uh, what is it called? GoFundMe. I don't use any of that shit. I don't, 
If anybody wants to give me a donation, the only way I'll accept it is if you make a fucking post on the Facebook Motivation Snake Diet Motivation group and you can say that you're donating 10 cents or fucking fucking $5,000 or whatever. Say that you're donating it and why? And make the fucking post. I will not accept money from anybody behind the scenes. Anybody. If you're going to fucking give money to the cause and you want to donate money, fucking I want it publicly stated on the fucking group. Say why you're donating it to me and then you can give me a shout we can do something. Okay, I, I'm not going to take any money. I help people for fucking free. I made this fucking conscious choice like fucking eight months ago. So if you want to make a donation, if you feel like you like I really deserve a fucking donation, you can fucking make a post on the fucking group, fucking write a little paragraph why you're donating, and then donate. And I don't want donations from people that aren't fucking fasting. I won't even accept it. I want If you're going to give me a donation, I want fucking donations from people with fucking results. Okay? Results. Because I don't want somebody almost like using it as publicity where they're giving me a bunch of money just to get their name out there and they're not even fucking fasting. I want fucking results. Okay? Fucking results. If you want to make a fucking donation, I don't even care if you donated a dollar. But it's all, there's no fucking stupid GoFundMe bullshit. Okay? It's you talking directly to me if you want to fucking give me money and you make a fucking post on the group saying why etc, etc, done deal, and that's the only way I'll do it, okay, so everyone have a great night, fucking get those fucking pictures up, I want to see some crazy fucking results for this October fast, and get that fat in ya!